busy, busy, busy. That's that's the that I, I believe that's why you know you'll see things in scripture along the lines of if a man will not work. Y'all think I'm making this up? I'm not talking about when you retire. I'm not talking about if you disabled. But I'm talking about some healthy folks. Every place I go by is hiring. I'm seeing on some of these signs they're paying more than I'm making. Yep. I'm about to make you a U turn. Yep. <laughs> I'm about to whip, I whip my one the other day that said four weeks of your vacation, $1,500 sign on bonus, 20 plus an hour. Yep. I thought, <laughs> and, the, and the thing's been hanging there for two months. That's right. It's terrible. And you got healthy folks walking around. I don't know what Kentucky calls it, but over there we call it, there's an EBT card, I think. Yep. Yeah. Oh, help me, I'm getting sidetracked already. <laughs> I'm getting sidetracked already. Here's how God feels about it. He said, the man won't work, he don't deserve to eat. Y'all with me? God expects us to be busy. He's busy. He's been busy since the beginning. Let's just look at the week of creation. Hmm? He rested on the, was it the seventh day? Is this still, is that still how that goes? Yep. It's called the Sabbath. And he created us in his image and his likeness. <clears throat> and when, for whatever reason, we are allowed, or the government pays us, to live a lazy, slothful lifestyle, mm -hmm. you're never gonna be happy. Mm -hmm. You're never gonna be happy. Yeah. A lot of folks I run into that's got some issues and depression and this, that, and the other, many of them don't have a schedule. We need a schedule. Mm -hmm. We need accountability. And if anything has ever been, not been more rampant, uh, bless God, you don't tell me what to do. You need to be accountable to somebody. We're accountable to God. We're accountable to our spouse. We're accountable to the place that we work at. Huh? But people are so offensive and so uptight. Uh, and we think that we're going to be happy if we get to live the life of the big ill disease called lazy. We got a lot of lazy folks in this country. And I'm going to tell you, it's a stench in God's nostrils. I'm not making this stuff up. Because he said, how, you, how, how does he feel about that? He said, well, if you don't work, you, you don't deserve to eat. Hmm? What am I getting at? Jesus Christ, after the cross of Calvary, is not being lazy this morning. Nor will he ever be. He still is, has our best interest at heart. And he's about many things for us to succeed. You need to roll out of bed and say, I'm going to be a success. God's plan for my life is that I'll be a success. That's right. Because there's many rolling out of bed. They're not believing for a breakthrough. They're believing for a breakdown. Mm -hmm. Oh, what's about to go wrong? Huh? Right. I, 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 it's just, you know, there's got to be something about to go wrong here. I'm about to get a bad report. I'm about to go broke. I'm about to die. Just They don't, they don't believe for a breakthrough. They're believing for, believing for a breakdown. I'm here to tell you, we are the head and not the tail. Huh? Why is the church folks got to look so silly and uneducated and all this other? We, we, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Amen. Uh, living a life of faith. Can you say amen? Amen. I can't, I can't get it out of my... Uh, I tried to move on, but y'all remember when Fauci said, you, Senator, are the one lying. <laughs> well, then I busted him out, didn't he? <clears throat> All right, let's go to some scripture. We got devils everywhere. Politics, they're everywhere. And just because somebody says something to be the truth or to be the gospel, don't you fall for it. 
Just because I'm up here preaching in the name of the Lord, you need to be checking me out. Huh? I trust God. But don't be so quick to just trust everybody. There is a difference. Come on. And there's been some things done in the past two or three years in this country that's getting covered up. And it seems like nobody's going to rise up against them. There's a lot of dead folks in this country now. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20. I want to touch on, he is our shepherd. Shepherd. What do sheep need? A shepherd. Sheep go astray on their own. I said sheep go astray on their own. And he is our shepherd. What do shepherds do? They guide the flock. Sheep need to be guided. Amen. Very important to be led. Very important to have direction. We're not our own God. And that's what's wrong with so many today. They are their own God. Mm -hmm. I'm going to help you out a little bit. But when the biggest thing in your life is you, you're your own God. Can you say amen? amen. The Bible tells us to uh, be concerned with other people's needs and other people's you know, going on as if it were our own. But we live in a world today that is so self-consumed, so selfish, and, and they could care less about anybody else but themselves. That is not a Christian quality. That is not a Christian characteristic. The Bible instructs us, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And I see things that go on nowadays that people do, and I'm like, now you know for sure you would not want that done to you, but you feel good about doing that to someone else. That's not God. We don't have to pray about that, amen? The bottom line is this, he is our shepherd. Can I share a verse with you? Hebrews 13, verse 20. It says, now the God of peace, you walking in peace this morning? I'm not preaching on peace, but are you walking in peace? Because it belongs to you. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, he's a powerful God. Nothing Nothing is bigger than the God we serve. Not even death. That great shepherd of the sheep. That's what I'm touching on here. That great shepherd of the sheep. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant. The blood of the everlasting covenant was his earthly task. Was his earthly work that is now finished. But now he is the great shepherd of the sheep. And we know those places in scripture that declare uh, Christ is the head of the body. Amen. How many of y'all got a head on your body this morning? Yes. Amen. We look pretty funny without one. You know what's that? Is it the Halloween season? Are we there? Mm -hmm. The scary? You know what I've shared before? How if you if you walk into a room and you're like, uh, there's a kid over there. That's a little freaky. Scary. It would, would it not? Especially if you turn the lights out and you stumble up on a, ooh, somebody had their arm chopped off. Body parts. Separated body parts. And that's many times what's going on uh, with people because they're not connected. They don't have their identity. They don't know who they are in Christ Jesus. And they're going around not attached where they should be. That's why the Bible says don't take sin on yourself together. As a man or son. Y'all with me this morning? We all should be connected to the body of Christ and he's the head. Do we not get our direction from the brain? Do you not get a thought Oh, I just accidentally slapped her. No, you got directions from your brain. That didn't just happen. I don't know what come over me. Uh, Some come over you, but it went through your head. And what I'm getting at is the great shepherd 
is guiding us. He's giving us direction. And you don't have to go around confused. You don't have to go around not knowing what your purpose in life is. You don't have to go around, you know, uh, just dealing with all the nonsense that's going on in this world. You can be connected in a covenant relationship with Jesus Christ. And, and we will be part of the body of Christ. We will be part of the sheep of his fold, his flock. And he will guide and direct us because that's what he's doing. Amen. Oh, I need direction. You, you just need to hook up to Jesus. I don't know what to do. I promise you, he'll tell you. Now, you're going to have to take a time out. I'm not talking about being in trouble, not them timeouts. We didn't have timeouts. We got war outs. Yeah, <laughs> and when that war out was over, you had a, you, uh, y'all remember the old, uh, can I get a little work, attitude adjustment, Hank Williams Jr.? Huh? It worked every time. <laughs> a little truth to that song. I'm not saying that's a good gospel song, but there's some truth to that song. But we got to take a time out from being so distracted. From this and that. And that's what the trick of the enemy is. To keep you so sidetracked. That you can't hear from God. We've got to tune up our spiritual ears. Not so much about our physical ears. But when we get where we should be. And we take time for God. I promise you we will have direction. You don't have to answer everything today. Don't, 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 don't get so prideful. That you feel like you've got to answer everything today. Let's pray about that. Let's think about that. Let's not make any rash decisions. Let's see what the Lord would put upon us concerning certain issues. Nothing wrong with that. That's wisdom. And it's part of allowing Him to guide us. I just want you to know this morning, we're not alone. And He's not sitting out and by. And it's not like we're just part of the rat race on that wheel just getting with it. And he's just, well, let's just see what's going to happen. But, you know, uh, he will guide us because he is the great shepherd. Amen. That's what he's doing. What's Jesus doing? Can you say amen? amen. Y'all heard of high priest? High priest. I think that's better than being the president. You know, nowadays, well, uh, the, the office of the President of the United States just doesn't hold its, you know what I'm saying. There was a time when that was respected. And it was, you know, something special. And some of that's losing its... Are y'all with me? Amen. Hmm. There's a lot of things losing. To each his own. But we got, we got to have a standard by which to judge things. And, and when something, y'all know what I'm talking about. Regardless of the name, if it takes you away from God and it's not promoting godly principles, that's not a healthy thing. That's not something that we need. Can you say amen? But I'm here to tell you that we have a high priest in Jesus Christ. Amen. What's the high priest do? Well, he used to go in for the people. And he had to be right. Well, when you were dealing with men, that wasn't always the case. But when you deal with Christ, we know that is the case. He is what? Without sin. Amen. Never one. Can, can't help what the History Channel might tell you. He never committed one single sin and he walked in the office of high priest and he is now in the office of high priest and he is interceding between man and God. He's the connection. It is impossible to get to God without him. Can you say amen? Amen. Likened unto a bridge, we're going to pass from Illinois to Missouri. And there's some there's a problem. The Mississippi River. Y'all y'all know what I'm talking about. All this jump. You can't jump that far. Huh? Oh, I'll get this car up to 120. I, I feel good about it. You can feel good all you want. But I promise you, you're gonna get wet. Amen. 
you're not going to make it to the other side. So we built bridges. And these bridges carry us from one bank to the other bank. They allow us to get somewhere that is impossible to get in a vehicle. And this is exactly what Christ is as our great high priest. On our own, we don't deserve. On our own, we, 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 it's just not going to happen. We have a sin issue, we have a sin problem, but because of our high priest, because of what Jesus is doing, we now can make it to God. Man, that's good news. I said, that's good news. Turn to uh, Hebrews. Chapter 4. Hebrews, good book of the Bible for what I'm touching on right now. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. It says, seeing then that we have a great high priest. Is that what your Bible says? It says, that is passed into the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our Profession. Amen. Hold fast our profession. You know, there, that's the problem. I mean, that, that's the only thing that can eliminate us is if we don't hold fast our profession. You can begin. You, you, I've seen so many people fall under Holy Ghost conviction, find them a place of prayer, whether they were saved at church or Walmart. or where, I mean, you can be saved anywhere. And they start off running and, and you know, but for whatever reason, the, uh, things enter in and they do not continue to hold fast the profession. Here's what I say, and not just concerning salvation. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. You know, there's times with, with any job that you're going to have days of discouragement. You know, this is difficult. I can't get this. Don't quit. Don't get up and go again in the morning. Stop and reflect and look at the mistakes. And, 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 and what I'm saying is, if you never quit, I promise you, you'll only get better. And you'll get a little more better. And it's the same way with living for God, church. We, what we started when we gave our life to Him, we must endure until the end. We cannot quit God. And that's what we're talking about here. Hold fast. I'm talking about with a made up mind, a, a death grip. Get you a grip and hang on and don't let the devil talk you out of your salvation. Because he had as many and they believed it and they let go. Huh? They let go. But we have a high priest. And he is very busy interceding to the Father on our behalf. There's not a one of us worthy. Huh? I said, there's not a one of us worthy. You know what's so sad is in many churches if a certain individual were to walk in, well, what are they doing here? Huh? I just can't believe what are they doing here? We all fall in that category if you want to get real. How many has had a perfect week? How many hasn't done something that just wasn't quite right? And now we want to say, well, you know, mine's only a nickel worth. Earth is a million dollars. Let me tell you something. If you're still a nickel or you're still a million dollars, you still are labeled as a thief. The laws of this land is where we get. I'm not talking about the laws of this land. I'm talking about when it comes to God's word and his righteous demands. He said, all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. And he doesn't leave us there, though. He says he has provided a way for us to come out of that sinful state that we're in and to be forgiven and to have our name recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. And it's simply because this very day, at this very moment, we have a great high priest. Amen. Mm -hmm. He's going in between. That's what he does. And it doesn't benefit him. It benefits you. It benefits me. I'm so very thankful this morning that I have a high priest. Yeah. Turn to 1 John. 1 John chapter 2. We have an advocate. Along the same lines, this is somewhat like a lawyer. Yeah. 
I remember at one time in my life, we were living in the Charleston School District. We were building a house in the Kelly School District. And at one point there, both places were livable. So depending on where we were at, we would spend the night. And we had a mailing address and we had a phone and, and all this other good stuff. It was a, a, a registered address at the courthouse. And so we started the school year in Kelly. And within the first quarter, the superintendent pulls my oldest son out of class and has witnesses and they begin to drill him about where he lives and he just knew he had me. For whatever reason, I don't know. And we talked and we couldn't work it out. I thought, well, this man's crazy. So I said, okay, I'll go get a lawyer. And I basically got this lawyer, it was $500. And he got done with the school superintendent. And, and it's like, a, we had to have a three-way phone conversation. At that time, I didn't know he had such a thing. So we're all three on the phone at one time. And he's like, you, you, can, uh, you can bring your kids back. I said, well, what he shared with you, is, you know, he got that information from me. And, but because I guess you wasn't the right one, but the lawyer. You see what I'm talking about? And it just seems like there's things that we try to get done, but many times you got to have a lawyer. You need an advocate. That's right. And that's what Christ is <clears throat> on our behalf. Let's read that verse. First John 2, verse 2. And he is the propitiation for our sins. All right. You got sin? That's not good. But it's not the end of the world. We have a propitiation. We have an advocate. See what I'm talking about? And not for ours only. This isn't, this isn't just for us. This is for everybody. But also for the sins of the whole world. Sin's a big deal. Sin, sin is a deal breaker when it comes to God. You ever be in the middle of something and you're like, hmm, that's, that's a deal breaker. We, we, no, I have just totally lost interest because of, well, I'm going to tell you, when it comes to God, sin's a deal breaker. He is not a man that he can lie. He's not a man that he can sin. He cannot even be tempted with sin. He knows nothing. It, it's just not in him at all. Any unholiness, any temptation, he is a righteous, holy God. And he cannot mingle, and it just don't mix. It just does not mix. And here we are in our sinful state, and at our best day, we got to just, you know, get honest and say, uh, this is just like filthy rags before the Lord. Yeah. Thank God that we have Jesus Christ. Because he has made it possible, church, to pay the price. And, it, and it's, it's not like, whew, man, that's, we, we have to have a relationship. I don't, I don't want you to misunderstand me. Oh, thank you. I, I don't have to do anything. Yeah, we have to call upon the name of the Lord. We have to have faith in what he done for us. We have to walk uh, with him, you know, throughout our life. We, we got to have a relationship with him. I mean, if you were to marry uh, the, the, the woman of your dreams and then you, you know, you have your honeymoon and you're like, okay. We're going to part ways now. And you come back in 20 years. What would you expect? Y'all with me? There's no telling. I'll tell you what you probably expect. They'll be remarried. There'll be some kids. And they won't be yours. That's probably what would happen. We thought you were dead. We didn't know. You know? And I'm just saying. He is looking to be a part of our life. An intimate part of our life on a daily relationship but as a result of this relationship that we have he is taking care of not just our sins but the sin of the whole world John the Baptist said it's so beautiful behold the Lamb of God yeah. who takes away the sin of the world and I'm here to tell you right now if you got sin in your life that's totally on you 
Because the Bible makes it clear he takes away the sin of the world. And the Bible says that whenever we confess our sin, he's faithful and he's just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness and that he takes our sin and removes it as far as the east is from the west. Now, if I'm standing before you this morning and I got sin in my life, that is totally on me. And why would I let the sun go down with sin in my life? Y'all heard the uh, term, he's Lord, Jesus is Lord. You know, he's Savior, he's Lord. And, and, and there's a difference. Lord is, he, he rules our life. He's Lord over us, you know. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. But when I say he is my Lord, it means I allow him to rule me. Amen? Amen. If, let's just say in a situation where you have someone over you, authority. You know, military has rank. And, and just say when you go to boot camp, you know, most of those there are privates, you know, and you have a drill sergeant who has been around for a few years. Those drill sergeants hadn't just been there a couple months. Many, many of those have been there probably six, seven, eight years, about, you know, about halfway through their 20 year career. And they go to another school and they do this. But if all you do is buck against him, that's not gonna go good for you. That's not gonna go smooth for you. That's not even gonna work. Amen. You have to submit to authority. He's there to help you. He's there to teach you. Uh, much like parenting. If all children do is go against their parent and are disrespectful, the Bible teaches against that. Just don't do your parents like that. We, we are to surrender to authority. And the highest authority in our life should be Jesus Christ. And that we will allow him. It may not make sense. You know, I may run across something in here. And I, I just, I, I don't really grasp that. But nevertheless, that's what you want. And, and, and I promise you down the road, you're going to see it. Many years I worked for a, a very good carpenter. And uh, there were times, you know, he'd say, hey, don't, don't do that. That's, and, you know, it might rub me wrong. And then, you know, I'd go ahead. Okay, you're the boss. But, you know, if I would get for real and, and, and think about that, I'd say, you know what? Now that it's done, he was right. I'm going to say 95% of the time. He was right. And, and, but if we will surrender our life to Jesus Christ and allow him to be our Lord, which would mean you can rule me, you, you, can, take, you can take what I've got left of my life and you can just, whatever it is you want me to do, that's what I'll do. I, I will let you be Lord of my life. I want to touch on that a little bit. Because if that's what he's doing now, he wants to be your Lord. Amen. And I'm not talking about a couple of days a week, but I'm talking about every day of your life. And we will be so much happier when we fall into that. Because that's what you were created for. For Jesus to be Lord of your life. And he's more than willing. He's more than ready. He lives now to be our Lord. Let's read a verse. The last verse I'm going to have. Acts. The good old book of Acts. A lot of folks get nervous about the book of Acts. <laughs> they got tongue talking in there. And the day of Pentecost. And. Folks just get all beside yourself, you know, you know, the word Holy Ghost is in there. And, but, you know, that's church history. And, and we still need to go by church history. Acts chapter 2, verse 36. It says, therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly. In other words, all God's people way back then, 
He said, let them know most assuredly. In other words, you can take this to the bank. You can count on this. This is a foundation that you can build on. That God has made that same Jesus. There's only one, the anointed one. Whom ye have crucified. And they did. Both Lord and Christ. Both Lord and Christ. Christ is anointed one. Christ was how he went about doing good, healing all the word press. Because he was anointed by the Holy Ghost, healing all the word press of the devil. Where's this bad stuff come from? It's not God, it's the devil. Sounds too simple. It really is simple. He's a bad devil. He's a real devil. And you know, a lot of times folks make light of that. But there's nothing to make light of. And here's the here's the good part of this. The, you know, they thought they were doing a good thing when they crucified him. God's people, a lot of them were involved in that. The, the, the great high priest at that time. But the same one that they crucified, God said, I got the final say here. And he is Lord. He is Lord. You know, the Bible says Jesus is Lord. And, and it's easy to say that. But I'm here to tell you that we will be so much better off when we begin to practice that. And we let him have his way. We let him have his way. It's just that simple. I'm going to let God have his way. Now that doesn't mean I'm going to have to go to Africa and be a missionary. Not everybody's going to do that. You might just stay right here and bloom where you're planted. How about that? Let's just bloom where we're planted. Let's just be obedient to God. Amen. Let's just be open to God. And let's just be willing to share our personal testimony. What God's done for us everywhere we go. How much happier we are now that Jesus is part of our life. Amen. Amen. And it could, you know, you were over there one time and now you're over here. And I promise you, people are still the same. People are tired of living in sin. People are tired of having no purpose. Pe people are tired of being drug around with that hook in their jaw that the enemy has on them. And that same old, same old. And, and we come to this place where I, enough's enough. My, my season of pleasure in sin is over. This is no longer pleasurable. It's, it's, it's really miserable. And I want to be free. And that's where we got to be available, church, by allowing him to be Lord of our life, that we can lead others to where we are. Amen. That's how churches go. Can you say amen? amen? So what I'm getting at this morning, I, I just don't want you to think that uh, we're just here <clears throat> on this journey of life and uh, things are set in motion and uh, what, whatever happens, happens. That's just natural. Yeah, there's a natural course of things, but we are supernatural. I've said this over and over. We are supernatural, and we should expect miracles because we have a risen Savior who's very busy on our behalf. I'll tell you how personal this thing is. He says, I know how many hairs are on your head right now. We don't. There is no way that not a one of us in here can say, oh, well, you know, I, I got it off. No, you don't. You don't know how many hairs you have on your head right now. Even if you were to cut them and count them, I promise you, you're going to mess up counting before that's over. But he knows exactly how many are on your head. And he says, there's not even a sparrow that hits the ground that I don't know about. And he says, are you not of much more value than a sparrow? That's how God feels about things. And I just want you to see that we have a great Savior who has been resurrected from the dead. And the cross, the finished work of the cross, it is a done deal. And all we do is call upon Him. And, and we're part of the family of God. But it doesn't stop there. He says, I want to give you a good life. I want to be a part of your life. And I would encourage you that we tap into these things I talked about and just see if he does not become more real yes. on a daily basis. Yes. Amen. amen. Can you say amen? amen? And if you would, 
please stand and we will go to the Lord in prayer. Again, thank you for being here. I love you, church family. And you know, it's very simple. It's much like when the, when the, when the garbage can's full, empty it. And when we recognize that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not where I should be, just give it to Him. It's just that simple. He will forgive you. If you ask Him, He will forgive you. And then He's not, he, he's not holding that over your head. He's not going to whoop you with that. He, he wants you to get on that straight and narrow path and begin to walk with Him and let Him be real in your life. Amen. Let's pray. Dear precious Heavenly Father, we just come before you right now with very thankful Amen. hearts. We lift up the name of Jesus because you've been so good to us. And Lord, you continue to do so many things in our lives. And I'm, I'm just praying that you would be real to us like never before. We, we need you every day as we get up and, and we all do different things, Lord. We need you like never before. And Lord, I just pray that we would allow you, that we would open ourselves up for you to come in and be real in our lives. Lord, help us to see the mercy that's available. Lord, help us above all to not let sin be real in our lives, but that we would get all under the blood, that we would tap into that blood covenant that's been made just for us and that we would realize how much you love us and how much you care for us. And Lord, I pray that we would find our true purpose in life as a part of the body of Christ. And Lord, as we leave and go different ways through the course of this week, I just pray that you place your hand upon us, that you will protect us, that you will keep us safe. I pray, Lord, that you bless each and every one of us like never before. Lord, with what's going on in the world today, I pray that the church would stick out and shine, that they may see our good works and glorify the Father in heaven. And Lord, I just rebuke the plans that the enemy has, that no weapon formed against us would prosper, and that you would turn things around, that we have that abundant life. And we ask all these things in the mighty name of Jesus, and the church said, Amen.